Bhavavatu Sahanao Bhunaktu Sahavirya Karavavahai Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu Mavid Vishadahai Aum Shanti 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 Namaste. <laughs> I'm sitting here all blissed out. <laughs> uh, I'm just kind of dazed with the power of this realization that I had this morning. Actually, it started last night. I was researching the uh, final sutras of the first pada of Vedanta Sutra and they reference the Chandoga Upanishad. Now, of course, I had to dig up Chandogya and start reading it. And there's a nice little introduction by Shankaracharya in his commentary on the Chandogya. And in it, he basically gives the principle by which religion operates and how it leads to self-realization. This was huge. This was really amazing. It, it didn't quite sink in last night when I first read it, but when I got up this morning, you know, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Oh, that's what he's talking about. And I went back and reread it just to make sure, and yup, He's giving away the store. <laughs> He's giving away the, all the secrets, all the secrets of everything, and especially religion. So, okay, okay. I don't have it together to do a formal presentation. So I'm just gonna, <laughs> just gonna paraphrase and summarize everything. Um, we talked about superimposition. Superimposition is the theory uh, given by Shankaracharya in his commentary on Vedanta Sutra. So, in other words, he's saying we cannot know the pure Brahman, para Brahman, uh, nirguna Brahman because it never becomes an object of knowledge. It's always the subject. It's always the self. So it cannot be seen, it cannot be experienced. It can only, you can only be the self, as Ramana says. You cannot see the self. So then, how are we gonna talk about it? How are we going to approach it? Well, we are already using the process of superimposition. This is basically maya, where we superimpose the qualities of one thing on another thing. And what we have in material existence is a mutual superimposition of the body on the self, on Brahman and of Brahman on the self. We superimpose the qualities of the body, such as individuality, separateness, ignorance, incompleteness, and so on, on Brahman, and we superimpose the qualities of Brahman, of being and consciousness, and so on, on the body. And by this mutual superimposition, then we come up with this uh, kind of hybrid existence, uh, the existence of the non-existent. <laughs> and this is Maya. Huh? 
It doesn't really exist. It can't really exist. But it can seem to exist, just like the snake seems to exist in the rope. We apprehend it wrongly. So it seems to be real to us, but actually doesn't have a shred of reality. And of course, it's temporary and all the rest. So, all right, how does this apply to religion? Well, we've already been through uh, several uh, sutras in the Vedanta that talk about how the Ananda Maya Kosha is identified with Brahman, although it's not Brahman. But there are some religious groups that claim that it is Brahman. And this is their superimposition. They're superimposing the qualities of the Ananda Maya Kosha on Brahman and vice versa, the qualities of Brahman on the Ananda Maya. So the rest of the first pada and the entire second pada of Vedanta Sutra give several examples of this kind of mutual superimposition used to realize Brahman. And going back to the Chandogya, uh, to get the background on this, it also adds several more examples, beginning with Aum. Aum, of course, is the representation in sound of the Nirguna Brahman. And it is also a prominent uh, thing, usage, in the process of Vedic sacrifice. So basically, Shankara says, the sound is not the thing it represents. The word is just a symbol. It's not the object. And especially in the case of Brahman, there's really no name or no word that can represent Brahman. So what's going on here is that we're taking something already part of the traditional Vedic sacrifice, Jagna, which was the ancient religion of India. And we are superimposing that on Brahman, which is, of course, the highest realization of the yogis and sages. So we're saying that Aum represents Brahman because that gives us a chance to think of Brahman every time we chant Aum. And of course, in Vedic sacrifice, every mantra begins and ends with Aum. So then it goes on to describe Indra as Brahman. Indra being the uh, beneficiary of many of the sacrifices in the four Vedas, especially Rig Veda, and so on and so forth. So many examples. When I do the formal presentation, I'll list them all out. But what's happening here is that we're taking something from one context and using it to signify something completely different. We're taking something from the religious context of sacrifice, jagna, and we're using it to symbolize Brahman. And the idea, the principle is, as Shankaracharya says, what a man thinks of, he becomes. So by thinking of Brahman again and again in a context of religion, of worship, Upasana, then one approaches Brahman and gradually realizes Brahman. And even if one does not completely realize Brahman, still this practice leads to higher worlds where there's more facility for self-realization. So there's no loss. And it gives a means for People who are attached through habit to materialistic processes like religious sacrifice, a means 
to approach Brahman, to build up a, a collection of impressions. Uh, in the mind, the mind is, con is composed of impressions, many, many impressions. And these impressions then become the contents of the memory, which is read out and compressed at the time of death and becomes the seed of the next body. So these impressions were called sangskaras. One of their uses is, is that they go to create vasanas or uh, mental habits or mental momentum. And especially in the next life, one uh, becomes driven by these. So the idea is that by thinking of Brahman again and again in the context of religious sacrifice, one builds up these sangskaras into vasanas. And in the next life, one assumes a form which is closer to or has more of the qualities of Brahman, or at least uh, to some degree, realization of Brahman is born or built into the next body. This is very intelligent. But what it means to me personally is that I had come to this conclusion by intuitive knowledge a long time ago. I can't fix the date exactly, but it was probably around uh, 19... 90s or something like that. 19, yeah, because by the 2000s I was already operating under the assumption that this was correct. And everybody was telling me I was wrong. Everybody was cast throwing shade on this realization of mine. Well, it's understandable because it undercuts their little sectarian narrow views that only our particular superimposition leads to Brahman <laughs> or self-realization or enlightenment or whatever. Salvation, you know, however they sell it. And all others are false. So I had made up my own, my own type of sacrifice, my own type of contemplation on Brahman, my own uh, special view or sacrificial process, and it worked for me. But of course, everybody else thought, well, this is not our particular teaching, so it must be wrong. And they gave me all kinds of static about it especially my so-called disciples and so forth. They had not the faith to understand this insight and reach for it themselves. But now I'm vindicated. I'm corroborated by no less an authority than Shankara that one can take one's favorite form of God, whatever that might be, and build up a whole uh, sacrificial performance around it. And by thinking that this form is a symbol of Brahman, one can draw closer to the final realization through this process. That means we're not limited anymore to just the paths that are given in the scriptures. Provided we understand this properly, provided we have the intellectual, moral, and emotional integrity to implement it properly, and not simply use it as an excuse for doing whatever we want, or for sense gratification, or power, that we can basically have our own private personal religion, and it's going to work. It worked for me. And even though everyone opposed me, and I had to withdraw from all association because of it, it has worked. 
and it brought me to the highest realization. And so also, it can bring you to the highest realization. So, if you want to understand this better, let's discuss it in the comments. Don't be shy. Tell me what's going on, and I can show you how to work something out. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shaktihi. Aung.